Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Photographers Inside the Photographer's Mind. I'm your host Dan Jin, and this week I'm joined by our reviews writer, Brittany Smith. Brittany joined the photographer around about six months ago, in which time she's been reviewing some of the latest and greatest pieces of gear coming out from photo manufacturers. We're going to be discussing some of the highlights that she's handled throughout that time. We'll also talk about her love for the darkroom, her relationship with film photography, and towards the end of the show, we'll be going a little bit deeper as we discuss women, their place in the photo industry, and what she would like to see for them in the future. It's a great hour of photography conversation, and it's one that you're certainly going to enjoy. And remember, guys, if you are enjoying the podcast, please do hit a like, hit a comment, let us know what you think. Do subscribe to the channel, and if you're listening on Google, Apple, or Spotify, subscribe there as well. We'd really appreciate your support. Right, let's get into the chat with Brittany. <laughs> Brittany, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Um, I'm in a little booth this week for the podcast. People who watch the podcast will probably notice that I move around a lot. That's because I'm a bit of a digital gypsy. So, bit of a nomad. Yeah, I can't stay in one place for too long because then people will realize I'm a weirdo. So I, I tend to just, uh, <laughs> I just tend to move around. Where, where, where are you in the world for for people watching? Where, where are you? Um, I am in Montana right now south central montana and are, are you out in the middle of nowhere actually i have neighbors <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm actually in the biggest city of montana i'm in billings right now and our biggest city is just a little over a hundred thousand people so you know huge metropolis. Wow. that is <laughs> God, too, too many people knowing too many people's business it sounds like i don't know if I'd, i don't know if i'd accurate. like that pretty accurate <laughs> You know, it's going on with everybody. So you're, you're a reviews writer. How, how long have you been with us now, the photographer? Um, oh, gosh. Going on six months. I think this is just wrapped up number five. And going on six, Chris decided I could stay. So. Wow. That's... Yeah, I'm excited about that. <laughs> and how, how have you find, found that, like, first five or six months? Have you, have you been enjoying it? Is, how, how's it been? A lot of fun. I'm yeah. thoroughly enjoying it myself. Um, I, I mean, I get to play with everything and give my honest opinion about it. So it's kind of, you know, I'm like, I wish I could tell my little 18 year old self to hang in there. It's <laughs> 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 sort of been my little 18 year old dream right now, living it. It's quite Just fun. Playing with cameras and sharing your opinion and, 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 and how you think out. it is. Yeah. Just geeking out. <laughs> what, what have, in, in that five or six months, what, what's been the kind of gear that what, what, what's what been the highlights of what you've had and played with and geeked out over? Um, I have loved, I've gotten to use the GFX system. So both the 100 S and then I got to review the 50 S two and I love it. Um, and then also I would say the Sony a seven four is a very solid camera. I had a lot of fun before that was announced playing around with that. And then, um, Leica, I, I mean, who doesn't love Leica? <laughs> Yeah. Series. I mean, who doesn't love Leica? Do you think? Do you think on Leica's part? Do you think it's just great advertising, or is there a lot of money? Look, we can't escape that fact. Yeah. There are a lot of money. <laughs> I'm like, if I and, it. <laughs> and, and 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 I'm sure you've probably held cameras that are a fraction of the cost, and you know, maybe maybe outperform a Leica or something. But what, what do you think it is about a Leica camera that gives you that kind of like? rush of endorphins um for me it's nostalgic the pace of it manual lenses it takes me back to being you know when i first started in the dark room in the process it's slower so i would say that um notoriety for sure it's definitely a status symbol yeah. but at the same time i mean their lenses are phenomenal so their yeah. stuff is, yeah their lenses are fabulous do you think do you think it's the lenses more than the camera bodies that that's got them kind of where they are. Yeah, I would yeah. say so. I'm like, their camera bodies are good, but there's definitely room for improvement. And no. I think with, you said you had the, the Fuji film, the medium format, the, is that the GFX series, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. If I say any of the, the gear wrong, I'll, I'll just, just make it clear that, you know, I, I, I I run the arts and culture side and I'm not, I don't really know what I'm talking about in terms of gear. 
I, I, I have a good idea. Anyways, I'm really good at that. <laughs> so, but no, please do call me out if I say something wrong because, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no stranger to making a fool of myself anyway. But um, but yeah, but when you, when you get a particular camera in, do, is right. is there kind of a for you, the way that you test cameras is is it a one glove fits all or is it like hey i'm shooting medium format today or today i'm shooting crop sensor so i'm going to change my approach kind of talk us through how your process of mm-hmm. identifying how good a camera is i shoot how i shoot so i make it work for me and so depending on what it is i do a lot of portraits a lot of fashion and model development and stuff that's been my my go to um starting to do more commercial work in branding, but I put it in a real world test. So say I have a real estate listing, I'm going to go check it out for a real estate listing and see how it performs because I mean, how else could I give an honest opinion based on what I think, you know, if I don't test it the way that I would use it. So Mm -hmm. if it's crop sensor, I try to factor in, okay, I need a different lens for that to get the same equivalent. Um, You know, and then I shoot for models or whatever if i have a test shoot going on i'll shoot them just the way i normally would just with different gear okay just approach it so (laughs) but would you ever so like if you if you were working if you had a client gig would you just stick with what you know and use your setup or or do you ever like oh no i bring it i i totally i bring both so as a safety okay. precaution, you know, I want to test it out and see how it's working, but I absolutely have my own gear as backup as a, as that little safety net. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. often, you know, I, I double shoot, I shoot more than I need to, but I, I want to know how it works in that setting and how it's going to perform. So, and in terms of what you've had in your hand, if, if what, what is exciting, which, which brand or which camera? Or which lens, whatever you've whatever you've tested, which which has kind of stuck with you out of above everything else? Um, definitely Fujifilm and, and Leica. Those would be my yeah. top two. The the medium format is gorgeous. And I mean, even their crop sensor, they're I don't know, Fuji has something special to where I don't have to edit and I particularly love that. I can get it so close in camera to the way that I want it to look that my editing is minimal. And contrary to popular belief, I, you know, a lot of photographers don't like editing. <laughs> I'm like, it's I, boring. I, I it. it's so boring. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I get so excited for the shoot. And then it's like one of those things is like, oh my God, I have like eight hours. I got, you know, for every hour I shoot that I've got to go back and call and prep and resize and blow it up to where I can see every single imperfection. And I really just don't enjoy it. <laughs> no, Call no, me, me neither. No, you're not crazy. I, you know, I think photographers, like we're kind of, well, this might not be a fair statement, but we're kind of, you know, artistic all over the place, kind of here, there and everywhere kind of people. I think just sitting there in front of a screen, touching sliders and buttons, it's like, <laughs> it's like the life out of me. It's like, I'm like, I think that's so, where my spirit goes to die. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, if we're being honest, I, that's not to knock on any sort of editing program. I just don't enjoy it. You know, back in like when I could watch an image come alive back in the dark room, that was different. That was therapy. I could spend hours in there. But yeah, it's so repetitive and it's so boring. Even with actions and presets and batch editing, it's still just... I hate it. <laughs> so, okay, so so obviously I, I appreciate the 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 process of difference, but you you raise uh, you talk about the dark room, like what what was it? Because that's still kind of a methodical process, takes patience yeah. and time. And what, why do you think that's something that was more like therapy, as you say, whereas oh, sitting in front of like what what what's the difference <laughs> for for those that who, who kind of grew up just doing digital <laughs> editing? What What's the difference in terms of process and feeling? I think I just like totally dated myself as to how old. <laughs> um, no, I, no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm totally, <teasing. laughs> but no, the dark room is special. You know, it's, first of all, you have the amber light. So you have mood lighting, everything is yep. dark. You have to, so it's sensory, everything is sensory. And so when you're rolling your film, you have to be able to feel it. You're in complete dark. So it's getting that pattern going. And then it's the smell of the chemicals. 
Okay. You know, printing, like there's a smell to it. And yeah, my hands used to get cracked from the fixer and, I, you know, lotion all the time. And so instead of dodging and burning with the thing, you actually made like a little hole to have more light to dodge, you know, to burn it. Or, you know, you had like a thing to dodge it. And it's just like you had full control right then and there, the enlarger. And I don't know, it's so much fun just it was math. Yeah, I'm a dork, but <laughs> like it was, <laughs> getting it down, I'm a numbers person. And then you, you throw it in the developer and you just watch it come to life. And then, you know, you have to wait and it's patience. You have to practice patience. And then it's like, oh my gosh, it's not exactly 100% how I want it, you know? So over the course, when you're first learning, you experiment with different, you know, you find your favorite paper, you find your favorite film, you find your development process that works for you. So it's just a much slower approach. So where people are on the computer, they're doing that through their actions. They're doing that through the presets that they create, right? Yeah. Um, but we're doing that a much more expensive, <laughs> much more expensive, yeah. much more time consuming, slow pace, but it's just, you know, it's one of those things you could have good music going and next thing you know, six hours are gone. And yep. yeah, and like, it's just, if you've never done it, I highly recommend it. It's wonderful. I, 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 I myself have done it when I was in, uh, college, uh, doing photography. Yes. But I can't really remember. Like I, I, we had two goes at it and I just, we, we first did the dark room and then the next thing we did was Photoshop. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I, um, I appreciate uh the dark room and everything that comes with it but um yeah i'm not very much a patient person so <laughs> <laughs> so i was like okay digital is the way for me so i i don't really have that much experience and i know a lot of new photographers don't either but so it, if you you said that sometimes you do the whole process and it wouldn't be 100 percent right is that it uh tough luck or do you no, get is there a way again. you can have uh, you do it again for a, another <laughs> Oh, so, and this is just for one. Go ahead, sorry. For one image. This is just for one image. Yeah, you could spend thirty minutes on one image. Absolutely. Wow. So what? You tell your clients that you'll turn the photos around in like what seven months or something by the time that you know. <laughs> imagine if you... It probably wasn't unheard of. No, a lot of photographers would send their their film to a lab to develop it, and then they would do the darkroom themselves. So they would skip the film processing and just do the dark room enlarging and yeah i'm like i think what you just said you were in college at this roughly the same time i was i was right on the the peak of film dying and everything turning digital and so you know it's just like what do you do what am i going to do so i i had to do both too and even yeah. then i didn't love like i had photoshop class you know clone stamp clean like we had to use photoshop to get the dust off of our scanned images and even then, I just didn't love it as much <laughs> as the Fair film. Enough. So, yeah. Now Have I'm... you... Sorry, go on. No, I lost train of thought. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I do that a lot, especially since I got the COVID. I'm not going to bring this up on every episode, but I, I am... Uh, slowly recovering from COVID, and sometimes I, I'll just be sat there and I'll be like, I have no, I, I have no idea why I'm here, and I don't mean in a philosophical sense. I mean that's that's for a different, different train of thinking. Is why am I here? But um, but no, have, have have you ever throughout your career have you had an opportunity to review film cameras, or is it has it purely been in the digital age? Um, right now it's purely been digital. However, um, I do have feelers out there to review some film, hopefully in the future. So I still have my medium format camera and I have an entire drawer in my fridge of expired film that I still shoot. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah. So, but hopefully, hopefully we'll get something that I can send off and review and I'm kind of itching for it. What, what would that be? Okay. If you could, if you could have one film camera that you could spend some time with geek out and review, I know that's putting you on the spot, but do, I, I, uh, don't know. I would love either a Leica M2 or a Leica M6. I have a Hasselblad 501 CM that I, it's sun yellow. I love it, but 
I don't have a 35 millimeter film. So yeah, I would definitely want to do one of the Leica M series. Yeah, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? That'd just, yes. just play. <laughs> do you do you ever? Because as as a reviews writer, and do, do you ever just have moments where you're just like, "This is crazy that I get paid to do this." Like I'm just like <laughs> playing with my cameras, and then or, or with the cameras. Like what what does that feel like? Just having the opportunity just to play with stuff and experiment with it, and then have a moment where you're like oh that's my job yeah no it's <laughs> I, I do that a lot actually <laughs> i'm like wow this is kind of amazing i get to do this and you know use a lot of years of you know for testing you have to do certain things for for zone testing so i mean some of it is i have to know what to look for and to know some yeah. stuff but but the most fun of it is yeah i get paid to play <laughs> you know yeah how yeah. Amazing is this? We get paid to play and it's so much fun. So I take it out and I'll be at a restaurant and it's like, okay, you know, I know I'm going to have pretty food coming in, but let's see what it looks like on this setup or let's see yeah. what it looks like on here. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I feel it's pretty awesome. lucky that I can do it. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, I, I just make, make that clear that while, while it is, you know, pay to play, like you, you, you have got, vast amounts of experience in this so so it isn't just a case of just like oh um give me camera see what happens like i, yeah. I have yeah. no idea yeah. what i'm doing <laughs> touchy button righty righty yeah no of course you know it's... yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no it's it's fun because like the experiment i i thoroughly enjoy you know yes i get to play around i'm shooting i've seen more of my own state probably in the last six months than I have maybe in the last decade. So awesome. I'm enjoying where I come from a lot more. I'm excited to go be a tourist in New York city again with whatever gear I have. And just, you know, it's, it's funny because not only do we get to play, but it's just like things that we take for granted every single day because we don't pay attention to. It's like a brand yep. new world again. So that's, that's awesome. Really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Finding yeah, new I th I th for it. I mean that's a beautiful thing about photography is it it really does push you to to explore and and look at things and just excuse me just be observant about the world around you and you you are right you can live somewhere for x amount of time and then until you pick up a camera you don't really see it right so yeah photography is good in that sense yeah so yeah. Like, my favorite little town it's you know i joke it's on top of the world so i went up there as much as i could this summer to watch the the world turn to black <laughs> and <Okay. laughs> and it's just like wow this has been 45 minutes away from me what am i doing with my life that i don't enjoy this more <laughs> you know i guess that's it's my amazing no oh, that's 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 good oh, am i still are we still there you're there. I see you. Oh, you did freeze. There you are. There we go. Hi. You're back. Brittany's back. Brittany's back. Like, we, did, we didn't you. panic. I don't know where it went, so I just sent you a little <laughs> message. I'm like, I see you. I hear you. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I guess oh, that's great. You see yeah. me. You hear me. I am validated. <laughs> Life achieved. <laughs> um, good to have you back. I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but um. That's the the beauty of live pod, podcasting. Although it, this is pre-recorded, really, so I'll edit that out. So not a problem. Wonderful, wonderful <laughs> technology. Um, I mean, we could just make fun of. I'm in the Montana. It must be the sticks for the internet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I assume there's just one guy just holds like a just one person holds like a I don't know a connector and like everyone connects to that. Is that how it is in Montana? I'm not yeah, sure. I just can't see them. <laughs> They're on the side. <laughs> So in, in terms of gear that you've not handled, or maybe, you know, that, that you've read about or heard about that's on the horizon, I know Nikon's, uh, has Nikon brought out the Z9 yet, or is that still being teased? And um, I, It's announced, but um, I think Chris just had it, actually. I think he just did a first impressions with it, but not available oh. to buy yet. So but are, are there any, whether it's that camera or any, are there any other cameras that you've kind of got your eye on? Um, that you're thinking, oh, this might be, this might actually be fantastic. Oh, that's so... not Fujifilm, by the way, because we get a lot, <laughs> a lot of people listening, and because I shoot Fujifilm, Chris shoots Fujifilm, you shoot Fujifilm, I'm and Hillary does. <laughs> On oh, your about to, sorry. 
And yeah, people think we're just like some walking ad for Fujifilm. We're not. We just love their no. cameras. And, you know, there's good reason for that. But yeah. in the interest of, of brand balance, brand? Fujifilm aside, <laughs> is there anything kind of, not necessarily that you'd buy, but, you know, or use, it's just, it, it interests you? Um, hmm, how do I put this nicely? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> um, I'm really hoping that Canon listens to their audience base and mm -hmm. that the R3 isn't typical Canon fashion where they adopted like 10 years ago, um, you know, where it could be like an all around, all around um, camera instead of having to buy two. Like somewhere along the lines, they decided, they're like, oh, we're going to have an awesome stills camera, but to mm. get what we used to provide you for one camera, you're going to have to buy another one, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and so they've, I really hope that the R3 isn't like that, you know, because I'd be disappointed, but at the same time, I think I would expect it. Um, I, I need to see it to, I think Hillary might have it right now, actually. Um, I would like to see how it performs. I'd really like to see how it performs. Um, Sony, I would love to see, like right now, let's be honest, they're still doing great. Um, they're still listening to what their customers want and building upon that, which I think is fantastic. They're one of the few that has, and the other brands are forcing, you know, they're forced to play catch up. But yeah. what I would love to see from them in the future um, you know, they have like so much potential and they have so many partnerships. I would love to see them get more specific, like editorial styles in their camera that you could pick, okay. you know? And so that it could, like, they just added, I think recently skin smoothing. I used it on the a7 IV um, and I loved it. It cut my editing time because they're so sharp, but now it would be amazing if they could, you know, take a nod from, from Fujifilm and mm -hmm. have more than their standard, their vivid, you know, yeah. I, I would love to see that. So as far as what's announced, um, nothing I'm like dying to check out, but I still want to play. I'm more excited for what hasn't been announced and is coming, if that makes sense. <laughs> more excited for what hasn't been announced and it's very cryptic Brittany I will say that it's, <laughs> well, I don't even know what's announced you know what I mean it's just like you see the specs for it and it's just like oh you know it feels like a lot of the cameras um are basically the equivalent of Apple updates it's like the S version mm -hmm. every other yeah. year and that's that's where I like how I feel with most of them and I think it would almost be better served if they actually went for it and reinvented it you know, or not even yeah. reinvented it, but made it a worthy update to do what you need to do. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad reality that, um, sorry, it, that a lot of camera, camera manufacturers have kind of gone with the trend of society. It's like, what incremental updates can we do rather yeah. than like, Hey, what groundbreaking kind of right. work can we do? It's like, Oh, how can we get a bit more out of them? How can we get a bit more cash or whatever out of the people by just, right. oh, now it can do this one little thing that the previous camera couldn't do. And, you know, people were, you know, humans were, right. for the most part, my, myself included, we're pretty dumb. So we're like, <laughs> ooh, shiny, sh shiny, more shiny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the A7 IV is definitely a worthy update from the A7 III, but that's the first one that I felt that way in a while. And mm -hmm. I... You know, like, I would love to see Hasselblad. I hope to God that they are planning something because right now it doesn't seem like they are. It seems like this is Hasselblad of the 2000s where it's like, okay, we're going to stick to this. And, you know, you're just going to keep throwing money at it. We'll make it a little prettier and a little shinier. And you're going to want to buy that too. But it's the same damn processor. And, you know, like, no specs update whatsoever, but it's really pretty. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and like and the it's nine thousand dollars, it's great. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, no, no. This one will be ten. This one will be ten. 
Uh, to everyone listening, sorry about that. That's a little technical issue because technology sucks sometimes, but that's not a problem. Uh, we were on about Hasselblad cameras. Which brand, uh, which which model were we on about, Brittany? The X1D2. So that's ah, what I'm yes. hoping that they have an awesome answer to soon. Whether it's what would that look wire. like? What would an what would an awesome answer be? Um, just a firmware update to be more competitive. Um, mm-hmm. I so secretly I know this will never happen, but I wish that they would play well with Capture One. <laughs> mm. I really do. That would be like the dream camera right there. Is if you had, you know, something with Hasselblad optics and what they're capable of with the medium format sensor, and if it played well with Capture One. And then maybe had some either film simulations or whatever. That would be, <laughs> that would be pretty gnarly. I would love that. That'd be yeah. That'd be fun. That'd yeah. be. But I mean, they're quite big cameras, though, aren't they? Like, what's it like carrying one of them around? Well, the X one D's pretty small. Um, it's pretty felt. It's lightweight, um, but it gets hot pretty fast. So I guess that would be something that I would like to see fixed too: is the battery not getting so hot so fast. But (laughs) so, yeah, I'm like, they're, they're not super heavy. They're, they're pretty small. They're mirrorless and they're smaller, but the, the big ones, yeah, they're heavy. They're a brick, uh, Mm um, usually reserved for studio. And well, at least that's how I would use it. You know? Yeah. I mean, seen an update for forever. Who just carrying that around doing street photography? Like I wouldn't even have the guts anyway. Like if <laughs> it costs so much. Imagine if someone just stole it. I'd be like, that's, that's what? Us. No. <laughs> 30 grand. So, yeah. I could have got Yeah. They... But here I am. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. So uh, away from uh, reviewing gear, you've actually r- written a, a few kind of other articles. Uh, one of them was, was it? Tell me if, uh, is it, was it Canon film Philippines or Fujifilm Philippines? Canon. No, it's Canon Philippines. Darn them. So <laughs> yeah, for those, yeah. So tell us what, for those that don't know, what, what was going on there? Well, they named all new ambassadors and they didn't feel that any woman was worthy of the title. And there were several, like, if you look online on our article, I linked several amazing Filipina photographers that are doing amazing work. They're working for brands. They're working for magazines. They're already doing it. But, you know, they even released a statement afterwards. It was a non-apology that, no, they stood by it. They still didn't feel that they were worthy of being named as, as ambassadors. And it's just, you know, and so I, it's a, subject that's pretty close to my heart because it's been, you know, I've gotten to see it through everything and women are finally starting to get some ground. We're finally starting to get some representation, you know, and when it's estimated that more than 50% of women are photographers as far as that and Mm -hmm. way less of that are considered the, the pro level that's reserved for the men that make the actual editorial salaries it's it's so frustrating you know and it's like women do amazing work and it's still we're still fighting for this and it's we're still fighting for it it's it's really frustrating do you do you think okay um and i know it's a difficult question to answer but like do you think this is like some conscious kind of barrier that the people at the top are putting in front of women or do you think it's a subconscious thing like do you think there's like decision makers going no women, you know, we don't want, we don't want them hanging around. Like, <laughs> this is like a multi-loaded question. This is loaded. It so, is. And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, no, but I think it's a good conversation good to have. Conversation because... to have. It's a really good conversation to have. Um, so in my experience, it's both, right? So mm. I used to have to, so a little bit in my background too, I've also produced and done stuff like that in New York and Um, When I was going for job interviews, I was actually told, and this was within the last five years, that, you know, it's too bad you're a woman. There's too much estrogen, too much emotional stuff. Other women are going to find you as part of the problem. They're like, if you were a man, we'd hire you on the spot, you know? And so it's frustrating because there's still an assumption. There's still a bias that, like, we're too emotional for it, you know, or that we're not strong enough to do it. And... I had to bust my, can I say ass? I had to bust my ass. You can say what you want. (laughs) 
That's my ass. So much harder than any man on set just to prove myself. And then once I finally did, you know, then they're like, oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for doing that. But, you know, part of it is I feel um, there's that mindset of the the boys club of men of a certain age um, that hopefully are aging out pretty soon. <laughs> You know, I think aging out means uh, a very polite way of saying dying, but you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> retiring. Okay, retiring. Uh, retiring okay, retiring. Okay. I don't wish death upon anybody, but um, aging out. Like I hope that they're retiring because that mindset. There's no changing that. It's what it is. And then there's some of it that just you know, there are brands that are sh- that are trying. You know, and but there's still work to be done. You know, we wouldn't have mm-hmm. to have grants specifically for women if the playing field were what it should be. Right. So yeah, the fact that we still have grants specifically for women because they still see a need that we're underrepresented, we're underfunded. We don't have a voice. We don't have the platform, but yet we do just as quality of work. There's still a lot of work to be done. And yeah, you know, and so yeah, I think it's a little bit of both, actually. But hopefully, conversations like this that are tough to have, we can get there. You know, because I'm like, I even did a breakdown on it. We still have, there's not enough representation. There's just not. Oh, so, so what, okay. So I guess some people may be watching this and saying, what, what is enough? Like, do, does everything have to be 50-50? And then, or is it like, how, how do we, because I agree 100%, you know, that it's not because of a lack of quality right. um, from female photographers. You know, anyone who tries to make that argument, good luck because it's, it's nonsense, right? Right. Okay. And then if you then take it to the next point about not, not necessarily artistic ability, but ability to deal with a job, like, you know, there, I've seen women work out there far harder than i ever have like and i'm like i'm not lugging that around and i'm there and i'm getting i'm getting you know uh, uh, so so we we know it's nothing to do with ability quality or anything like that so but how do we find that happy balance do we just say okay it's it's 50 50 so take canon for example right and then this opens up another door because then it's like oh okay if we're doing six men and then six women you know then then we've got trans people as well it, it's so hard to find a space where everyone is happy so i guess my question is is it is it just going to be a case where someone else has to be unhappy and maybe that's men or is is there like a utopian everyone's represented and everyone's cool i think it starts with so it's hard right because if you go to the 50 50 let's be honest a lot of men are going to think that the women are undeserving um, they're just going to assume it's to meet a quota, right? Like that, and it's it's probably not even just men. It's probably a, a certain percentage of the population. It would be the same as if we did it for non-binary, LGBTQ, trans, you know, like that whole population. It would be this the same assumption. So I think it has a lot to do with we need to bring awareness to it. Maybe that it's still a problem. Um, we need to just take people seriously and look at their work. Their need to be more opportunities in general. Um, Mm -hmm. Having really tough conversations that need to be had and also realizing, because it feels like there's a struggle hold and I think this is where there's a disconnect is men feel like, not all men, like trust me, there's a lot of really amazing ones, but the ones that are fighting it the most are the ones that feel like we're taking something from them that they work mm-hmm. so hard to build. And the truth is, it's because, in my opinion, I think it's because we are conditioned as society that there's only so much pie, right? Mm-hmm. And so yeah. if we open it up to more women or more minorities or, you know, different demographics, that it's taking away from their pie. That's yeah. kind of what we're thinking. And I think it's bullshit because what we need to be doing is baking our own damn pie, you know? Yeah. Really. And... So and I, think- I really want pie now, Brittany. <laughs> We're having this very serious conversation, and I'm just like, oh, I'd love some pie right now. <laughs> really good recipe if you would like it. So I'll have to share. But, you know, I think that's – it's hard because it, there still needs to be work to be done. 
you know, and I think what it's going to take is people at the top doing some digging, right? They're going to have to, yeah. to do some research because let's be honest, we're in a society that is overworked. A lot of us, you know, work two jobs. They don't have time to put themselves out there the way that they need to be put out. So I think brands can do a much better job at researching their own clients. Um, so far, they're not all doing amazingly well at that. They're not succeeding as admirably as they could. <laughs> and go ahead. Sorry. I, I, and I, I don't just want to hate on Canon because this, this is a, a widespread problem throughout the industry. Nikon's had its issues as well. I know F Fujifilm's been, uh, had, you know, been, been shown to, to, to not being great in part. So it's, so it's not, not just Canon, but I know Cat, one of the Canon's separated in different different areas of the world and right. I, I i remember if i do remember rightly um canon being like oh we in the states at least we have nothing to do with the philippines right. like do you think it's fair for them to distance themselves or like hang on man it's your brand like there's no mm. that's a different canon do you think that's a i felt that was a cop-out it was a cop-out and it was really frustrating actually because you know what they could have done is like what a an amazing response would have been, would be like, you know, that's really unfortunate. I see you. I do see it's a problem. So we're going to launch an incentive for continued education for women, or maybe we're going to do like local programs, local workshops, or, Hey, you want to do the special photo shoot? We're going to lend you our gear. We're going to do this. Like there's so much that they could have done that really wouldn't have cost a lot. And it would have spoke volumes for their brand. You know, it would yeah. spoke volumes, but it's also how they're unattached, you know, like they're up here and they don't yeah. really see, it's like the boss that's so far removed that they don't really understand what's going on and, and they don't understand yeah. their clientele. And it's not just Canon, like you said, it's, it's a lot of brands that just don't understand that. And it's also a financial mistake on their bottom line, because I think women are more prone to spend money than, than men are as far as that you that's know. true and so i'm like well it's it's your bottom line so when i see your quarterly earnings you know and it does it reflects like their cop out it's it's a cop out it reflects kind yeah. of poorly on them and no they they don't get it so what i want to see is you know not that that's unfortunate what do you plan to do about it like what actionable steps do you plan to do that? Because saying you get it is one thing, but, but you don't, because if you don't have like, like Sony at least launched alpha female, right? They're just like, yep. yeah, I get it. You're right. There's, there's a problem. There's an imbalance. We're going to do this. And now it's alpha female plus because there's, you know, it's not just women. It's also different subsets that we, that yep. need our help too. So I think that's what they need to do is like, stop coughing out. What do you plan to do about it? What actionable steps do you have to identify and make it better? Like it wouldn't only reflect on them as a brand. I guarantee you their sales would do better if they did. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, th I think as a man as well, like from a male perspective, you know, I I'm for one, I'm, j I'm just tired of all of this. Not, 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 not with, you know, women airing their grievances, I, they're justified, I understand them. But I just think this is such an easy non-issue to solve. Like, hey, just think about what you're doing. Think, hey, when we send out these 12 photographers that are all men, what do we think will happen? And then some <laughs> other person with a brain goes, this is not, this is not good. This is not, this what? is not good. And then, you know, it's, it's such a, it's, it's an easy problem to solve, but one that seems to continue year on year and it's yeah it, i'm i've had enough of it and i'm sure you have yeah, even no, more I'm, if i have <laughs> God, i feel like i'm preaching to the choir you know but i mean yeah globally i can understand globally they're a completely different culture than we are yeah, yeah but that can only be an excuse for so long you know and i just there's a problem where women are still super undervalued you know, and if we, I, I guarantee you, if we were to see transparency in the pay department, yeah. still, there's still a huge, huge pay differential that, that shouldn't be there, you know, and I don't know. It's just, yeah, I, I just wish that they would be honest and say, listen, 
<laughs> we don't value you. We don't value you as a woman, and I don't have to like it, but at least that has, I guess, some truth to it. You can, yeah, I mean, you're right. I, you can kind of respect it more. Yeah. And, you know, just come out and just go, yeah. yeah we, but it's like, at least there's integrity. I don't really want to hang around with you guys, <laughs> to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, you're not coming in. And yeah. then, yeah, you're right. Maybe maybe part of it is, okay, let's go make our own pie then. Let's go make our own pie. And yeah. there, there are a lot of, you know, there's there's black women photographers. Uh, there's women in street photography. And, and they're making their own pies. Yes. And not a lot of people, you know, it's interesting because you see a lot of men like, Oh, oh, it's women only, is it? And they don't see the irony <laughs> How do you in like. like it? How do you feel to fit into our shoes that are a little too small and a little, you know? It's, like, it's true. You know, yeah. I'm a sh short white Jewish man, but I want to be allowed to be in black women photographers. You know, I want to I wanna be, let me in, let me be a part of it. But it's no, of course, I jest. It doesn't it? I'm like, it does. It, it's, yeah. it's, you feel excluded. And I, I think that's part of everything is maybe that's the word I was looking for earlier is community. We don't have community. And I think that's one thing. If we had more of a community that was supportive and we highlighted you know, amazing work and amazing photographers from different backgrounds. I think that we would see a lot more um, representation. Hey guys, we are going to have to end the podcast there. We had a slight technical issue towards the end, but we feel we've got enough great conversation for you to enjoy. So the show is a little bit shorter this week, but if you did enjoy it, please do hit a like, hit a comment, share it, subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for Brittany with for sitting down and speaking with me. We do enjoy talking to our to our team about everything that they're doing here at the Fablographer. Of course, we'll be back again next week with another show, so do tune in. Until then, see ya. <laughs>